How would you feel if you bought from a company that had close ties with Nazis during World War II? The chance is that you probably did it without even knowing. Companies who supported the ideologies of Hitler himself and even helped make them stronger. Or companies who'd force enslaved people to work for them. In this video, we cover a few of these companies and the ties they had with the Nazi regime. So let's start with the first company on our list. Hugo Boss, Nazi fashion designer. If you're someone who wears the label, you might be surprised that Hugo Boss is not some made-up name by advertisers to sound chic and sell clothes. No, Hugo Boss was a real person. What's more, he was a Nazi. Not meaning a challenging, demanding boss to work for, which he may have been. No, an actual Nazi. Over the years since World War II, you will occasionally hear comedians say something like this. I hate the Nazis and everything they did, but damn, they were good dressers. And the reason why the SA and the SS were such good dressers whilst being sadistic murderers? Hugo Boss. Boss was born in Germany in 1885. In 1923, when Hitler attempted his beer hall putsch in Munich to take over the country, Boss founded a textile company. One of his first orders was supplying uniforms to the SA, Hitler's street brawlers. Boss joined the Nazi party shortly after that and, by all accounts, supported Hitler's policies. Nazi party membership helped Boss get business. In Boss's case, he was awarded many government contracts. In addition to the SA brown shirts, Boss produced the slick, black, and imposing uniforms of the infamous SS and the Hitler Youth. When the war started, Boss started making uniforms for more Nazi organizations, railway workers, and of course, the Army, Air Force, and Navy. Making uniforms isn't a crime, but using slave labor to make them is. As in the case of most Nazi slave labor, Boss's clothing makers were given inadequate medical care and food. They also lived in overcrowded, disease-ridden barracks. Punishment could mean being sent to Auschwitz. After the war, Boss was punished for his company's actions. Though some would argue that he was not punished enough. He was fined, forbidden to vote, and from running a business. He appealed the fines and transferred the company to his son-in-law, but he remained the power behind the scenes. Boss died in 1948. It took 51 years for the company to acknowledge its past and pay some reparations to surviving workers or their families. Volkswagen Of course, you've heard of Volkswagen. The brand is world famous. It became that way in the years after World War II when the company began making what eventually became the Beetle for mass consumption. The West German economy was recovering after the war, and the Beetle was a cheap, easy car to build, making car ownership, and therefore the growth of suburbs and the economic gains that went with it, possible. One little hitch though, Volkswagen, which means people's car, was the brainchild of Ferdinand Porsche, who also built tanks tank and plane engines for Germany during the war, and one Adolf Hitler, aka Der Führer. The plan for Volkswagen was to do precisely what it did after the war, make affordable cars for the lower classes. Before the war, only 2% of Germans owned automobiles. The very rich and their cars were luxuries only the rich could afford. Hitler and Porsche believed that starting a new industry would help the German economy recover from the depression and put a good spin on Nazi economic policy. Hitler ordered the first design from Porsche but his car could not be made cheaply enough by private industry. Hitler ordered a state factory built at Wolfsburg, still the home of Volkswagen today. Hitler then started the war, and his dream of a people's car went nowhere. Instead, resources needed to make cars were required for the war effort. Finally, in 1946, Volkswagen began again, and car-making history was made. BMW BMW, unlike Volkswagen, was a successful business before World War II. Like Hugo Boss, the company that became BMW began as a textile supply company, which grew into one of the biggest concerns in Germany. During the First World War, the company made uniforms for the German army. The majority owners of BMW before, during, and after World War II have been the Quandt family, who made a fortune in the First World War and diversified in the years after. Planes, cars, motorcycles, and engines. Today, the Quants are one of the wealthiest families on the planet, with an estimated worth of some $45 billion in 2022. In 2007, founder Gunther Quant's grandchildren ordered an investigation on the Nazi ties of their grandfather and father in a response to a German TV documentary that accused the company of being close partners with Hitler. Unfortunately, it seems that the Quant grandchildren were ignorant of their forebearers' Nazi ties. Their investigation resulted in a 1,200-page report which spelled out exactly how closely BMW was wrapped up in Nazi German affairs. The Quants of today had acknowledged their companies and families' past and have attempted to make reparations where possible. 
and many donations to causes that benefit survivors. For BMW, like Boss used slave labor on a massive scale in the work they did for the regime. It's estimated that throughout the Nazi period, some 50,000 imprisoned and enslaved people were forced to work for BMW under horrendous conditions. Siemens. Next time you go to the hospital to get x-rays or MRIs or lab work done, look around. At some point, you'll see the name Siemens. The Siemens name and logo are among the most recognized in the world. The corporation makes medical equipment, electronics of all kinds, industrial and energy sector goods, and much more. In 2021, Siemens was ranked the 91st wealthiest company on the planet with a capitalization of $140 billion. Siemens is actually quite old. It was founded in 1847 to make parts for and develop telegraph technology. In 1867, Siemens completed a telegraph line that stretched 7,000 miles from London to Calcutta, India. Like many other German companies, Siemens was affected by the manpower shortage in Germany when the war began. With most able-bodied men in the armed forces, Siemens began receiving inmates from concentration camps and POW camps. Many of these so-called workers were Jews destined for death. Indeed, the factories of some German companies, Siemens among them, were located at Auschwitz and other camps. There is no way that the company could have remained ignorant of what was happening in the places where their components were being made. Most infamously, slave labor put together electrical components for Hitler's secret V-weapons program. Thousands of people died making those revolutionary missiles. Making matters even worse, if that's possible, was the fact that even before the war, the director of the company, Rudolf Bingel, was very close to Heinrich Himmler, the head of the SS and one of the architects of the Holocaust. Moreover, Siemens got rich by purchasing seized Jewish businesses from the government for very low prices. Siemens has been much quieter about its role in Nazi Germany, unlike the Quandt family, but they're reminded of their past once in a while. In 2001, Siemens tried to trademark the name Zyklon for products destined for the USA. In German, Zyklon means cyclone. You might also recognize the name from history for Zyklon B was the gas invented by another German company before the war that was used in the gas chambers of Auschwitz and Majdanek death camps. One product that was due to receive the Zyklon name was gas ovens. When the news was reported in Germany and the USA, a loud and sudden outcry caused Siemens to rethink their incredibly ignorant plans. Bayer and IG Farben. Next time you take a Bayer aspirin or Claritin, rub copper tone on your skin or use Dr. Scholl's foot products, think about this. Bayer was founded in 1863, but became an important part of the infamous and gigantic business conglomerate IG Farben, short for Interessengemeinschaft Farben Industrie AG, or Dye Industry Syndicate Stock Corporation, which played a huge role in the Holocaust. At war's end, 13 IG Farben executives were convicted of war crimes and served time in prison. IG Farben bought a large chunk of the German chemical company Degesch. One of Degesch's products was the previously mentioned Zyklon B. In addition to making the poison gas, IG Farben produced many other goods in factories which, like the others you've just heard about, were in extermination and concentration camps. IG Farben was one of the biggest conglomerates in the world at the time. Literally hundreds of thousands of Holocaust victims toiled for it during the war in the same horrible conditions described earlier. After the war, Bayer Industries was reformed as an independent company, making pharmaceuticals and agricultural products. One of the men who helped run Bayer from 1951 to 1964 was Fritz Termeer, who had been imprisoned for war crimes after the war but released early for good behavior. He enjoyed an all too comfortable retirement in 1961. We hope you enjoyed our video. Please leave a comment down below and give us your thoughts and don't forget to like it. Subscribe to the channel as an offering to the gods of the algorithm and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.